since the introduction of the automobile in the 1900s, cities have gradually reshaped themselves to accommodate cars. And that's seen really obviously in this picture right here. Uh, roads have gotten smoother, they've gotten straighter, they've gotten wider, and they've gotten faster. Crosswalks have gotten sparser with, with urban development. And traffic signal uh, cycles, they've gotten longer. They actually accommodate cars and not people. And let's not be too hard on ourselves, because uh, admittedly, cars have been pretty dumb. But now cars are getting smarter, and they're becoming more capable. Um, and this is because computers are getting faster and they're getting smaller. So, I mean, we all have a car when we, well, we all have a computer when we go into a car, it's our, it's our smartphone. So we have a tremendous opportunity here to try to actually flip the script. Um, now that cars are smarter, can we actually uh, reshape cars to suit cities? I'm a computer scientist by training. And my research group at MIT, we study artificial intelligence for designing intelligent infrastructure. So let's go back to 2008 to see this iconic experiment that illustrates just how dumb cars can be. So these, there, there are a few uh, Japanese physicists, and they drew a big circle on the ground. They gathered a couple dozen uh, uh, drivers and cars. And they set out to get to the bottom of something that we experience daily. What exactly is the cause of traffic? So here, there are no traffic lights, there are no stop signs, there are no lane changes, and there are no accidents. But even though the vehicles start out evenly spaced, uh, these clumps of cars form, and they actually come to a complete stop. These are these so-called phantom traffic jams that come out of nowhere, seemingly. And these these uh, clumps of cars, they actually even move backwards. These are called backwards propagating waves. And the basis for this is something called string instability. So we have a, a string of cars here in a circle. And when one car taps its brake, the car following it, it, taps, it taps its brake just a little bit more. And over time, this small, tiny perturbation amplifies down the string of cars, resulting in these traffic jams. So, uh, in short, we actually cause these traffic jams. Uh, traffic, traffic congestion, as we all know, has really big implications on our cities. Uh, they cause uh, billions of hours of wasted time, billions more gallons of fuel. Uh, we heard a bit earlier that transportation is the largest contributing sector of greenhouse gas emissions in the US. And these speed variations that we see, these are strongly associated with car accidents, and car accidents are the leading cause of death among young people. I can just go on and on about the negative externalities of traffic and congestion. There's air pollution, there's noise pollution, and so on. So what, what can we do? When we think about AI or artificial intelligence, we often think about robots or, or news recommendations, but my group uses AI in a pretty different way. We develop machine learning methods to actually model future city scenarios and then analyze what makes some scenarios better than others. So here we use deep reinforcement learning to uh, learn a driving strategy for a fraction of cars, the ones indicated in red. And we keep the behavior of the other vehicles fixed. This is what we call mixed autonomy traffic. And this is what we, uh, this is, this is what we see. So this is the outcome. So first we see the formation of these backwards propagating waves, just like earlier. When the red car hit, uh, passes the white dotted line, we're gonna switch on the learn driving strategy. And when it does, it takes on a different driving profile. At first it opens up a gap, and then it quickly closes it again. And by doing so, it has actually effectively eliminated the traffic jam. So it's a bit hard to capture just how difficult it is to analyze problems like this. Transportation and uh, control researchers have been at it for at least 60 years, and there's still a lot of limitations to how this is done. And what's worse is that every time we tweak the system, if we add cars, if we uh, change what the sensing capabilities, we change the level of noise, 
the researchers have to go back to the drawing board. And it takes months and sometimes even years to analyze every new uh, uh, scenario. So even today, much of the research still focuses on uh, single lane roadways, single intersections, and even a scenario as simple looking as this, the best known method as of 2018, so sh here shown in blue, it's sandwiched between upper and lower uh, bounds in terms of speed. This method only works in some scenarios, and here it only works in lighter traffic shown on the left-hand side. Our machine learning methods, on the other hand, actually allow us to automatically learn near optimal uh, uh, driving strategies. So here, in short, with just 5% of vehicles, we can actually eliminate congestion and improve traffic speeds by up to 50%. Of course, the world does not appear in circular roads, and there are a lot of assumptions baked into scenarios like this. Uh, for instance, here we have perfect cars with perfect sensing, but luckily machine learning also allows us to quickly analyze other scenarios. So we t we've taken the same ideas and we've analyzed open, uh, open roadways, we've analyzed scenarios where we don't have perfect cars, and recently we've been really surprised to find that uh, potentially regular people, uh, you and me, could follow some instructions and mitigate congestion just as well as an autonomous vehicle. Here's one scenario we explored that I particularly liked, and the, the really fun thing about working in AI is that sometimes it surprises you. Here, uh, we asked one car to mitigate, uh, to actually maximize the system speed across two lanes of traffic. Um, and here's what we found. So rather than give up because, or give up on one of the lanes because after all there are, there's just one car that we're controlling here, uh, it actually learned to quickly switch back and forth uh, between the two lanes. And like, I actually didn't know this at the time, but this is, this is what's called a traffic break. This is actually a known strategy. It appears in training manuals for highway patrol officers, and they actually use this to clear a freeway after an accident. So here we see a, a, um, a, an officer driving this sinusoidal pattern, uh, <laughs> and it, it prevents you know, any one of these five lanes of traffic from, uh, from going too quickly and causing a traffic shockwave downstream later. So we've also started looking at other ways that cars can help out with city needs. One opportunity is for cars to actually work together to help emergency vehicles collaborating to clear the roadways. So what we're actually finding is that uh, these cars can actually make the roads safer for emergency vehicles, they can actually help the emergency vehicles get to their destination faster, and they can minimize the impacts on the rest of traffic. In another vein, uh, one of our, our best estimates right now indicate that there's about four times as much extra greenhouse gas emissions locked up around intersections than freeways. And so this is actually because we have a ton of intersections, and it's because of all the idling that our vehicles do there. So we're devising strategies to minimize that, that degree of idling, and this actually translates to quite a bit of greenhouse, greenhouse gas emissions reduction. We've also begun work to scale this work to cities and we need much better algorithms because there are a lot, a lot, a lot of possible future scenarios. Uh, one line of work that I'm particularly excited about is transfer learning. This is the idea of understanding when we can train AI agents in some scenarios and actually reuse that knowledge in other scenarios. This is what will allow us to not exhaustively train our AI agents in every single new possible environment that exists. All in all, I think that this is an immense opportunity for us to make cities more livable, more sustainable, and to make them smarter. Uh, at my group uh, at MIT, we're providing insights to governments around the world, and we're making it possible to reshape cars to suit the needs of cities rather than the other way around. Thank you.